Good morning, Jesus Image Church. Yeah. And uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. We want to say Merry Christmas to everybody watching online. Jesus is with us today. I'm going to read out of John, 1 John. I'm going to read starting in verse 10. It says, He came into the very world He created, but the world didn't recognize Him. He came to His own people, and they even rejected Him. But to all who believe in Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not from a physical birth, resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the world... So the Word became human and made His home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen Him in His glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Jesus, we thank You that deity would wrap Himself in humanity, that You would come to the earth as a humble bondservant. Jesus, we lift You up. We glorify You this morning. This morning, we lift you up. We exalt your name above every other name. The name of Jesus. We thank you that you would come, begotten of the Father, that life himself would come and die for each and every one of us, Jesus. We are thankful as a church. We are thankful as a family for you and you alone. In Jesus' name.
Jesus. You're holy, Jesus. You're holy, Jesus. Holy is the Lamb. Oh, Lord, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, Jesus. The humble king, the humble king who came down for us, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you. Would you just tell him you love him? Precious Savior, Precious Savior, we love you. We thank you. Oh, precious name we pray. Amen. 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 What a beautiful time that we get to step into another form of worship. Um, before we step into offering, I would just like to thank our worship team. You guys are dismissed. What an amazing time to give, amen? And we get to celebrate this day when the Lord came down and chose to come down in a seed. He was the best offering, amen? I'm gonna read out of Leviticus. Leviticus 27. And verse 28 says, Nevertheless, no devoted offering that a man may devote to the Lord of all that he has, both man and beast, or the field of his possessions shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted offering is most holy to the Lord. And in verse 30, it says, in all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. And as we give this morning, and for those of you guys who are tuning in this morning online, let's just think about what today is. He was the precious offering. He was the first seed. He's the holy one that came down to offer his entire body. And in Leviticus, the Lord says that the offering is the most holy to the Lord. So this morning, let us take what is in our hands and offer it to the Lord this morning. Our tithes, and our offering. So the tithes is our obedience, but then we also get to step into giving him more because he gave all, right? He gave all. And every time I think about this day, Jesus in a manger, the response is to give. The response is he literally came to die, to give himself, not part of himself, but all of himself. So let's not hold back this morning. Let's give it all to him this morning. Amen. So you guys can give online. For those of you guys watching, there's going to be a give on the number of your, or there's going to be a text to give on the number of your screen. But Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord, that you chose to come. You chose to come, you chose us, Lord. And you are the holy sacrifice, Lord. So Father, we give our offering to you, Jesus. It is the most holy to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for every giver, Lord. Bless every giver that we're not giving out of obligation but our pure adoration and love for you, Jesus. We are giving because you first gave, Lord. Truly, 
From here on out, let us give because you first gave, not out of obligation, but because you deserve it all, Lord. You deserve it all, Jesus. So bless every giver this morning. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus, thank you for your love. This, this proven, unmatched, unconditional, eternal love. Father, you love us with the same love that you love Jesus. This is unfathomable. And so we just say, own weak way, thank you. These thank yous are so cheap, Lord, but they're our best. And so from the depths of our soul, thank you. Thank you for leaving heaven's glory, heaven's throne room to come and save and love and befriend us. This is, these are unsearchable mysteries. We give our lives to, to know your touch and to know this love. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Would you reveal the weight of your love the faithfulness of your heart, the depths you went to so that we could be yours today. Thank you, Lord. You refused to be without us. Lord, as your servant, uh, Reinhard Bunk, he said one time, I'm reminded, Adam purposed to live without the Lord, but God purposed to not live without Adam. To not go on without him. To not leave him in his sin. 
this is your heart for us. What an amazing God. What an amazing God to submit to his Father. Gladly to obey and by the Spirit to become a seed in the womb of a little virgin girl. And to be born amongst animals. As a sign that he is the last Adam. That you are you yourself are our Eden, our peace and our pleasure. Our joy, our strength, you are our strength, Lord. Can we just just for a few moments here? I, I want us to ask the Holy Spirit to birth a true thanksgiving in the depths of our souls right now. Can we do that? All of you in the room, all of you watching all over the world this, this Christmas morning. Holy Spirit, would you give us a divine thanksgiving, a divine grace, this, this vision of Jesus, this vision of our salvation, who is a person who came to save us and to love us and to be one with us and to marry us, to die in our place, to be buried for us and as us and raised for us and as us. What a wonderful Lord. His name shall be called Wonderful. Strike us tonight with holy wonder. Or this morning, I should say, strike us with wonder. Let families uh, this Christmas morning be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Let the broken come to this gentle Jesus who is pure and holy, and lowly in heart. We love you, Lord. My prayer for everybody in this church this morning and everyone watching is that a true love for Jesus would burst forth in us. It only comes by you, Lord. We need you to love you. And so we ask us, and we ask you, and we say we are, we are in need this morning to love you. I think that's what you want more than anything from your church. I know it is. To love you, oh, Bertha, massive, weighty love in us that we never ever veer from or recover from. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we thank the Lord and give him praise this morning? Thank you, Jesus. You can tell a few people you love them and then you can be seated. I'm going to talk to you uh, this morning about the incarnation of Jesus. Take your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. For those of you who, who are watching, uh, really all over the world, I'm sure, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. We pray you're having a blessed time with your family. Jesus Image family, can we welcome everyone watching? It's an honor, honor to be with you. And what I, what I want to encourage you to do is take out your Bibles 
and uh, get communion elements ready. Um, we actually wanted to come to you this morning by video to give you time to be uh, with your families, but do not bypass or forget Jesus. Uh, especially on Christmas. Things can get so busy where we forget about the Lord. So I want to encourage you parents watching. Um, maybe your parents aren't there with you. Get your Bibles out. Get your communion elements ready. We're going to pray together. Let's make this about the Lord. And then additionally, I want, to, I want you to begin uh, praying certain things that I'm going to give you uh, in the sermon over your family during this, this holiday season. We also wanted to give our team, who does an amazing job, our setup team, Guys, can we thank the Lord for, for this team? You know, yeah, they're incredible. They're the best in the world. And um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we, we do not yet own our own building. We own our own land, and we are building a building. And it will be done soon, in Jesus' name. And we will have our home uh, very, very soon. And we're going to grow old there together and watch our children bask in the presence of the Lord. Say amen. But um, we, we do now meet on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights at the old Orlando Christian Center where I was saved and I grew up. That in and of itself is a miracle. My father-in-law, Pastor Benny, actually built the building we're in right now. The Lord built it, I should say, and the Lord used him uh, to really help uh, create an environment that changed the nation. So there's so much a prophetic fulfillment that's taking place right now. We're so grateful. But one of the reasons we wanted to come to you by video today and not, not, um, uh, not meet in person was because we wanted our teams to actually be home and be with, our, be with their families and have the time uh, to celebrate the Lord. Isaiah seven fourteen. the scripture says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which we know means God with us. Aren't you grateful? Yes. I want you to look at the beginning of verse uh, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Say this, Jesus, Jesus is, the is the sign of all signs. Of all signs. I want you to listen to the language very clearly and carefully. The Lord himself will give you this sign. Notice that the Father takes personal ownership over sending the best of his heart our way. The greatest sign and wonder in history is Jesus himself. Say amen. amen. I'm going to say that again. The greatest sign and wonder in history is Jesus himself. Oh, that makes me so excited. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Here we discover the heart of the Lord to be with us. Now, how with us does the Lord want to be? Paul goes on to say, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Jesus makes a statement in introducing the disciples to the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, oftentimes our gospel preaching stops shy of the encounter with the Holy Spirit, which is not the fullness of the gospel. Jesus, the enthronement of Jesus, is forever connected to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Remember what John 7 said, the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So the word glorified doesn't simply mean like he was shinier. Though he, he, he I'm sure, was incredibly shiny <laughs> when he came out of the tomb and 
people were blinded at the sight of the angels. I mean, if the angels blinded the soldiers, who, who knows what the Lord looked like? Isn't it wild that he just sat up on his own? Amazing. I touched on it last, uh, a few Sundays ago. That the Lord himself, Lord himself sat up, trusted his father to raise him. We call this the eternal Sabbath. He's Lord of the Sabbath because he's fulfilled it. He is it. When he laid down in the tomb, it was the greatest Sabbath test in history. And that's why the psalmist said, you will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. That's Jesus speaking. Psalm chapter 16. You will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. The Holy One cannot be corrupt. He cannot disintegrate into the ground because mere men are made of dust and dust alone. It's from dust you've come. And I feel the anointing flowing already on Christmas morning. Thank you, Lord. It's from dust we come. And the scripture says, to dust we return. If you're just a man or woman. But if you're fully God, as well as being fully man, and you're perfect, you don't return to dust. You blow the dust wide open. Right? So, Here's Jesus, this amazing, amazing Savior, and he's teaching the disciples basically to not be afraid. Do not be worried. I will send to you a comforter. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm those disciples, I'm stressed out because I left everything to walk with you. Right? I mean, you left everything. The fishermen leave their nets behind and their boats, which is to leave it all. One of the reasons the church in the West is struggling and shrinking on many fronts, not everywhere, but one of the reasons it is is because we are afraid to call people to leave everything. And you can't get in without leaving everything. It's, it's the front door. It's the call. I leave all for your sake. All. I know so many of you have done that here in this room. And I know so many of you watching have done the same. Don't be afraid to tell people, leave it all for Jesus. What a, what a testimony it birthed in your heart that the devil can't take from you. People can't take it from you. Critical hearts can't steal that testimony. I left it all. And so they left boat and net to follow Jesus. Of course they were stressed out. How about Peter's words? Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of life. Have you thought of that language? You have the words of life. When you talk, we come alive. Peter's saying, when you speak, every cell in our body feels it. We're not worried about what we were worried about before we met you. We don't see things the same. We used to keep all the fish to us, and then you taught us to give it all away. And before we met you, that would have felt horrible, but when I do it now, I come alive, and you taught, you've taught us a different way. And, it, and you, don't, you don't stop at principle, Jesus. We don't even care, it seems like, what you talk about because the sound of your voice animates us. And notice Jesus says, are you all leaving too? Are you going to go? I, I used to think he, I'm sure he said that with a broken heart, no doubt. But when he had his first church split, and if Jesus had them, well, if you feel like being a pastor one day, you're signing up for that kind of stuff. One, one time somebody dear to me made a really bad call and I took ownership of it. I just felt like I could have stopped it. 
regarding their marriage, and it just broke my heart, and I was doing all that soul-searching. Could I have stopped it? Could I have done more? And finally, a pastor reached out to me. He goes, hey, how many of you think, he said, do you think that the Lord is a good pastor? And I go, yeah. Do you think the Lord was a good pastor in Eden? I said, "Uh uh-huh. He goes, and Adam and Eve sinned right under his nose. He said, people are free moral agents. Relieve yourself from that condemnation and burden. Really helped me. It really did. But here, Jesus is literally on the heels of his first church split because his words were considered too much. He said, if you don't eat my body and drink my blood, you can have no fellowship with me. That's a pretty all-in statement. And I love that he didn't sit down to explain it. You know, he didn't say, well, it's really symbolic. He, he didn't say that. He said, here's the deal. And they left, and he didn't say, oh, please stay. He looked at those who were with him and said, are you going? Are you going to go? It was his way of saying, I'm not changing the word of the Lord so that you'll stay. So it's on the heels of that, and he looks at Peter, and Peter says immediately, where can we go? But you have the words of life. Hearing the words of Jesus is much more than just a matter of encouragement. He brings us to life. We're born again by the word of the Lord, and we are sustained And stay alive because of his word. He raises us by the word in his presence and sustains us through the word of the Lord. And so he says to Peter and the disciples, are you going to go? And Peter's response is so telling that his disciples hung on to everything. As the bet, at least Peter was saying it like this, your words are like an IV into my soul. Every, every syllable is this slow drip called eternal life flowing through the IV. You, you make my darkest places filled with light. And so Jesus understanding that this was stressing out the disciples. I mean, my word, I wouldn't want him to go. What do I do when he's gone? What do I do afterward? You're going to leave us to ourselves? And Jesus begins to speak about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he says, I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. Isn't that wonderful? He says, behold, another comforter will come. And that word another means just like me. He is just like me. Don't worry. Don't worry, boys. He's just like me and girls because women followed him too and took great care of him. And he says this about the Holy Spirit, and this is what I'm getting at. He says, for you know him. Think about that. He goes, for you know him. But the world does not know him. Knowing the Holy Spirit is reserved for those who follow Jesus. And then the Lord goes on to say, for you know him. For he is with you and shall be In you. Amen's right. He is with you and, listen to the progression, shall be in you. That's desire. How did they know him if he wasn't in them yet? Because he was in and on Jesus. So what he's saying is, is you, you know him because you stay close to me. 
you know what he's like because I have fully yielded to him gladly. So when we talk about Hebrews 1 verse 3, that he's the express image of God, the very brightness of his glory, it doesn't say there he's merely, merely, it does include this, don't get this wrong, it does include this. Did you hear that part? I'm just making it really clear. (laughs) I've learned my lessons over the years. It does include the Father, but it also includes the Spirit. Hebrews 1 is telling us that Jesus not only perfectly reveals the Father, it says he's the express image of God. Jesus also reveals the nature of the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the perfect pattern of what it looks like for a human being who is fully God to be completely filled with, empowered by, and led of the Holy Spirit. He's the only one who's done it perfectly. You get that? So he says, you know him, for he's with you. He's with you. And he was with the disciples because he was on in and with Jesus and they were with Jesus. So they had a front row seat of what a Holy Spirit filled life would look like. Which is pretty amazing. What a front row seat they had. You have to understand for Peter to say or for the disciples to be discouraged because Jesus is saying I'm leaving. That would crush us all. For Peter, he's like, but when I was drowning, you, you were standing on what was attempting to kill me, and you pulled me out of it and stared at me. <laughs> and you said, why did you doubt? Yeah. Wow. And we're talking about a man, who cal- a man who calms storms in front of them. And when did the food multiply? If you read the text slowly and properly... It didn't start multiplying until the disciples started handling it, handing it out. And here's the disciples watching food multiply in their hands. You could just see Jesus in the front of that crowd going, <laughs> How you like it, boys? You know? Are you having fun? It's a good idea to bring me the bread and fish, wasn't it? Check your baskets. Of course. They never seen the dead raised. When the blind eyes opened, they said, Never in the history of Israel have the eyes of the blind been open. And so this one says, I'm leaving. Okay. And then Jesus turns their attention to the Holy Spirit. And he says, he's with you. Now listen. And shall be in you. That's close. That's close. You can't get closer than in. You say, why are you talking about the Holy Spirit? Why are you talking about this? Because I want you to see the nature of God to come very close. That's the incarnation. Not only come close, but come close and identify with us at a level that is unmatched. And that in and of itself is an understatement. God becomes a human. And God is still fully man. The incarnation remains. Amazing. You see, the Christian faith, it's unrivaled. There's nothing that even comes close with regards to mercy and grace. You can go on as many pilgrimages as you want and try to scrub yourself clean, but the issue remains, how do you deal with sin before the Lord? And so the Lord comes close. Say, thank you, Jesus. In Exodus chapter 25, just write this down. Actually, let's read it together. Exodus 
Don't you love him? Read the ESV. Verse 8. This is prior to the Lord telling Moses, the, explaining to him which materials were needed to build his house. But verse 8 shares the heart of the Lord with regard to seeing a house built. And let them make me a sanctuary. Now here's the heartbeat. That I might dwell in their midst. I'm going to read that again. Let them make me a sanctuary. That I might dwell in their midst. Do you hear the heart of God saying, I'm not content with staying on top of Sinai? Can I come live in your camp? Uh, It's been great being with Moses and the elders of Israel. This has been wonderful up here. I found a friend that I'm really close to. Moses is like no other. I meet with him face to face. He's got an assistant down there. looks like he's got some potential, Joshua. Poor Joshua, being an assistant's not easy. He had to wait on those mountains for every fast. 40, 40, no water, no food for Moses, and poor Joshua is having to kind of do the same thing without the glory. (laughs) Now, we don't know if Joshua fasted, but we know he stood his post. You, You don't just step into inheritance easily. What, what many people, what, what the scriptures call faithfulness, uh, the church is starting to call legalism. Unfaithfulness will blow up your destiny. And so it was a real easy answer for the Lord. The Lord, Moses said, Lord, who will take my place? He didn't hesitate a minute. He goes, Joshua, son of Nun. Not only is he faithful, he's, he's so faithful He spends more time with me than you do. That's what the Bible says. Joshua stayed in the tabernacle even when Moses went home. That's good discipleship. I'm going to make you all work for that one. But I'm coming. (laughs) And so the Lord's like, this is wonderful, but I have this heart to come live with the people. Create for me a sanctuary, a habitation, that I might come, listen, and dwell, not visit. I don't want to be a house guest. I want to live with them. And in order for that to happen, Moses, I need you to build this house perfectly because I'm meticulous. And you must build it based on the encounter you had with me. Build it according to the pattern that I showed you. You don't get to build your own house if you want me to live in it. And so here we see the heart of the Lord to come our way. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, oh, I love that they started, that the Lord started with this one, wonderful. You know what wonderful means? Filled with wonder. His name shall be called wonderful. Let's start there. 
I love that God started there. Basically saying, my heart's desire for you is to so touch you and, and change your heart and reveal myself to you that you live in a constant state of, I don't know what to do with him. He's so... And you, you try to articulate it and as you're articulating, you go, I'm falling miles short with this articulation. So I'm just going to go, ugh, for my whole life. I'm just going to... I, 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 I don't know what to say, so I'll put my hands up, right? And my hands can't go high enough, so I just want to crawl out of my skin. So I, I'm just going this way, and then I, I just, they don't feel high enough, so I get up on my tippy toe. Right? Wonderful. He's filled with wonder. He's the God of wonders. can't be figured out though he is as consistent as you could ever imagine. He's faithful and new every morning but completely unpredictable. Faithful to his word in that he's good but he refuses to be a robotic program. He's wonderful. He's filled with that. You don't ever want to lose the wonder, the sense of wonder. I feel like heaven's throne room will be filled with wonder and is filled with wonder. But I'm talking about when we're there and we gaze upon the Lamb and there are harps playing and ten thousands upon ten thousands and maybe the Lord will give our, our, our worship team these glorified instruments up there. Maybe I'll whittle them for all of you up there. Maybe that'll be part of my assignment. <laughs> Probably sound like a Greek bagpipe of some kind, but <laughs> can't you picture this as you read the scriptures, the book of Revelation, the ten thousands upon ten thousands wearing robes of white, all centered around the Lamb of God? What provokes these elders, for instance, to cast down their golden crowns? Why would they, if the crowns were given to them by God, why would you ever cast them down if God gave them to you? Because at one sight of the Lord, you realize you don't deserve that crown. And forever, the, 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 the incarnation, uh, the incarnation will provoke wonder in the age to come. Did you, did you get that? That the angels, the angels are beholding Jesus, the Lamb of God, going, wait, you, you put on flesh for them? Because we knew you for trillions of years before you did that. Do you realize what the incarnation triggers according to Ephesians 3? Just even in the hearts of the angels, basically God's dealings with the church have become like the university for angels. They are discovering what God is like and they look at Jesus and go, oh wait, you're, you're the pre-existent word and now you've got skin all to sustain this covenant with them? He's wonderful. I mean, we have a great front row here. Our ministry team's phenomenal in second row, but none of them are covered with eyes inside and out, and they're probably thankful for that. <laughs> He's wonderful. He's the mighty God. In case you get him confused with a prophet or just a moral example or a good teacher, Jesus is the mighty God. And notice I'm reading you, to you Old Covenant Scripture. That the one to come is the mighty one of Israel. The pre-existent creator. He is everlasting father. There are two points of view here. I'll let you land on them. One is that he's such a representation of the father, which is true. He is the perfect representation of the father that he's declared to be father there. The other view is that Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection, in a sense, births the church, Isaiah 54, speaking of the, that the barren woman, the church, who did not have children, one day she would sing and be with child. Notice that follows his suffering in Isaiah 53. And he's the prince of peace. 
Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And that's where I want to land this morning. It's on the peace of Jesus. We are living in a turbulent world. And everything that can be shaken is being shaken so that the eternal kingdom remains. More than ever, people are wondering, who can I trust? What can I trust? What institution can I put trust in? What, what pastor is trustworthy? What, what husband can I trust? Well, the, what is it, 50 to 60% of Christian marriages end in divorce tragically. Kids are wondering, can I trust mom and dad? Who can I really give my heart to? That's not a knock on families who've gone through things. I, that's just the, the reality. I'm trying to express the genuine pain that many of you in this room and many of you watching are walking through or have walked through. Can we trust in people regarding our resources and our, our provision? No. Can we leave the peace that we so long for, can we leave that to government officials? No, because the scripture reads in Isaiah 9 that the government will be on his shoulders. And that government is an ever-increasing government. But we can trust in Jesus. And he doesn't promise the absence of the swirl around you. He never will. He actually promises the presence of the swirl. You know, opposition is not the marker of disobedience. Opposition, unless you're just completely foolish and sinful, but if you're living a godly life, opposition is a marker that you are walking with the king who's headed in a specific direction. How do I live when all that is around me seems to be crumbling? When the nation crumbles and church leadership crumbles and families crumble and economics crumble and polarization increases and hatred and division rears its head. Jesus says, I have peace. I am the peace. I am the peace that surpasses all understanding. He is the Prince of Peace. Therefore, peace flows from His throne. And so this morning, we're about to take communion. I want to invite you to come to Jesus this morning. Maybe you're watching this with your family and parents, you've got your children there. Maybe you're not even sure that they're following Jesus. I want to invite you to look them in the eye right now and ask them if they want to yield their hearts to Jesus. Children, maybe your parents are watching this with you. Maybe mom or dad aren't fully walking with the Lord. You would know it better than anyone. Why don't you look them in the eye right now and say, Mom, Dad, isn't this wonderful? People being led to Jesus by their children. Thank you for it, Lord. Why don't you look at Mom and Dad right now and say, Mom, Dad, do you want to give your heart to Jesus this morning, on this Christmas morning? And if you do, if you feel the Lord pulling on your heart, I want you to get right there down on your knees and close your eyes. You just heard of the wonderful love of God, of a God who would leave all, leave the glory of heaven to come and pay your penalty and die your death and be raised so that you would be raised with him. This is love. So I want to lead you this morning in a, in a prayer, but I want the prayer to lead you to him. I don't want you to be led to my prayer. I want you to be led to Jesus. And that goes for some of you in the house this morning if you feel like you need to repent and come to Jesus. You do that right where you are. But this is vital before we receive communion. 
Pray this out loud with me. Can we pray it in the entire church this morning as well? Say, Heavenly Father, I've sinned against you. I am a sinner. And I confess my sin. Forgive my sin. Cleanse me. You promised to. Jesus, I receive your forgiveness. And I declare that you came, born of a virgin, because you're perfect. That you lived a perfect and holy life. And I believe that you suffered, that you shed your blood and died upon that cross. And I believe that you were buried and three days later raised from the dead in the power of the Holy Spirit because you're perfect sinless, the holy, mighty God. And I believe that you ascended to the right hand of the Father and that you are seated there right now and that you're coming back. And I want to be ready for your return. Jesus, I am yours I, and you are mine. I repent, I turn from my sin, I turn from the devil, I turn from this world, and I put all my trust in you. I turn to you fully, and I will follow you all my days, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can we give the Lord praise? Thank you, Jesus. those of you who receive the Lord we want to invite you you can contact us the information is right there on the bottom of your screen we would love to walk with you and help equip you and see you live a victorious strong joyful Christian life in Jesus name now let's receive communion may I have the elements please Communion is a glorious declaration of what I just preached on. His desire to be one with us. If you don't have the elements, would you just lift your hand? Okay, we just got a, uh, one there, two over there. Think of this, how one does he want to be? He wants us to feast on him as a meal. To, to literally feast on him as our meal. That's oneness. He who is joined to the Lord, the Bible says, is one spirit with the Lord. This is the incarnation. This is Christmas. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's lift the bread. Lord Jesus, you said, this is my body. And we examine our hearts now, our minds. Make us lowly, humble, forgiving, kind, and meek, just like you. And make us faithful in these last days to stay the course. Lord, you were lifted on the tree. Your body was torn. You said, I can count all my bones. Your flesh torn, that we would be one. We be one with each other, one with you. Now let the healing power of the Holy Spirit flow through this room and through those cameras and flow into every home and every dorm room and every hospital and every jail cell and every car and every person's ears who's listening, eyes who are watching. Let the healing power of the Holy Spirit flow now 
And we, the church, Lord, stand in your authority and we say the Lord rebuke every sickness, all weakness, all torment, all disease, depression, and oppression. Be gone. Be liberated this morning from all evil. And we break the bread. Let's break it. And we receive the precious holy body of the Son of your love, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's receive it. lift the cup you see the Lord Jesus is the cup and the drink in it he's the cup and Lord when we come to the cup and we drink we don't choose certain aspects of your character we drink it all do in us what you need to do regardless of the pain or or the joy. Do in us what you need to do, Holy Lord. And we plead the blood this morning. Your blood is a seal and a barrier and a stain. Let God arise and may his enemies be scattered in your lives. I'm going to say that again over you. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered over every family watching. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Every demonic assault, every pain goes in Jesus. You said, when I see the blood, when I see it, I will pass over. I know you see the blood now. We receive the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you for it. It's shed for the remission of our sin. In Jesus' name. I'll stand in his presence. Would you lift your hands? I just want to pray a blessing. Those of you in your homes, just lift your hands as well. May the Lord's presence rest upon you. May his spirit dwell around you and with you and in you. May the word of Jesus, the word of the Lord, dwell richly within you. May this be the greatest year of your lives. May you be so enraptured in his presence and so aware of him that you feel like you're with him every waking moment. Be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Hey everyone, Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property 
that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that, we believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. 
While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first-year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week, and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space in the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May He be adored and worshiped on this property. May His Word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May His gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find Him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.